Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC, and we're here at Clustered Systems Company in Santa Clara, California. I'm here with Bob Lip. Bob, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? Well, great, great. You know, Bob, I'm glad we had an opportunity to chat. I was just down the street doing a talk, and uh, why don't we start at the beginning. Who is Clustered Systems Company, and who do you help? Okay. Well, Cluster Systems Company is a uh, seven-year-old company, and essentially our main product is cooling systems for computers, especially very, very hot computers. We can cool systems all the way up to a couple hundred kilowatts a uh, rack. So there's essentially no limit. We've completely eliminated the cooling problem in hot servers. Okay. So, so you sell, you sell uh, systems and cooling systems, do you not? Yeah. We started with the cooling end, and uh, we've been having a lot of pressure from our customers to, to fo give them fully integrated solutions. And so... Respond to the market, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay, so, so what are we looking at here, Bob? So what we have here is a blade server, and it comprises two independent sections, two motherboards, and these are the Intel Jefferson Pass motherboards, and under these, what we call heat risers, which we replace the heat sinks with, simple, low-cost blocks of aluminum, they bring the heat up to a flat level, they planarize the heat flow. Okay. And under these are the hottest Xeon processors you can get, they're 130 watts. And not only hot performance-wise, but hot, hot. So like a flood lamp worth of energy coming off of these four points here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If it's yeah. the right frequency, you could tan yourself. Okay, okay. And, and so, so you bring the heat up here. Where does the heat go then? What, what, where, how do you take it away? So once we have it planarized, we bring it to a, a cold plate. And this is a, uh, a cold plate that is normally mounted in one of our blade servers. Mm -hmm. And you notice here... First of all, ingress and egress for the fluid. Okay. Now the fluid in this case is a liquid, but it's a refrigerant liquid, R134A. Okay. Same type of fluid that's in your car and your home, everywhere. It's pretty ubiquitous. Okay. And it's a pumped refrigerant. We don't do any compressive cycle. So it's a low power pump that circulates it in here. It partially evaporates mm -hmm. and the mixture of the steam and the, and the uh, refrigerant come out here. Okay. And when you say steam, it's not your hot boiling water steam. This is cold steam, if you will. It's, okay. it's uh, essentially room temperature or whatever your chiller temperature is or your uh, heat exchanger outside. Okay. And this is very efficient. One of these plates uh, can cool up to 1.2 kilowatts of power. 1.2 kil And this is very thin. Like some of the heat exchangers I've seen with water tend to be these big uh, channels, right? So right, right. Well, using refrigerant, we get very, very good efficiencies. Refrigerant itself, since we're using the latent heat of vaporization, um, is much more efficient than, than water. In fact, one of the benefits of it, besides being much more efficient, is it's isothermal, so there's no shadows. Water would warm up as it flows in, in here and out here. Mm -hmm. Refrigerant doesn't, it evaporates, and the steam that comes out, keeping this all at, at one at a constant problem? temperature, yes. Okay. And, and this is the, the type of material we use. This is a, an aluminum extrusion. Okay, and I can see it's got lots of channels running the, the full length of it. Yes, yeah. so little yeah. micro channels, they can easily hold the pressure. This is a very robust uh, uh, piece of aluminum. It mm -hmm. looks pretty fragile, but uh, you can beat these and pound these and nothing much will happen to okay. these at all. Just as an aside, does this a free refrigerant, does it conduct electricity like water would? No, no, it, it it's completely inert. Okay. Okay. Chemi oh. It's chemically inert, okay. Okay. and so you can mix and match materials, uh, and, uh, and if it does, um, you know, people always worry about leaks. Yes. Now, we braze in everything. This is all fully brazed, totally sealed, no connections. Okay. The probability of a leak, leak is, is absolutely minuscule. Okay. But if somebody did decide to run one of their forklifts into this thing and, and while we're installing something else, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, the, the fluid would simply evaporate. It would evaporate. It would evaporate. Okay. And it's non toxic and, and, and okay. uh, environmentally uh, benign. Uh, Okay, so, so you place material. this, this mm -hmm. full plate over this, uh, this node here and, right. and you take the heat away. So this uh, would be, when it's in operation, inserted like this. This is actually, the blade inserts, um, the, as the blade goes back, this is inserted. I'm kind of doing it the gotcha. reverse, reverse way the blade normally moves. Uh -huh. And it sits on top of, of the, um, um, all the hot elements. Mm -hmm. Now, it not only sits on top of the hot elements, cooling those directly by conduction, but other components on the motherboard are all cooled by convection because this makes the entire environment of the blade this temperature. Okay. So we really don't have to worry about the lower power uh, components at all. Do you have to worry about condensation though? No. Well, it, this has to come from a, a secondary loop, a refrigerant loop. Sure, sure. And, and typically somebody would use something like a Lieber XDP and that automatically adjusts the temperature to be always above the condensation point. So okay. there's never, never any moisture in okay. one of these okay. systems. 
and then then I gather it uh, a system like this wouldn't have to be in a controlled air environment like a, a, a data center you could probably plop this in like a, a warehouse or something couldn't you yeah I could plop it in a warehouse anything just anything that keeps the rain off of it basically okay okay terrific okay so, now one of, one of the features about this which we didn't go into is servers come in these tin cans they yes. flop and bend yeah. move around no matter how much we try to planarize this, it really isn't planar, right? And, 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 and it can move. So what we have developed is a special thermal interface. And this probably in the photograph looks kind of all beat up because this is kind of our lab version here. Mm -hmm. But it's surprisingly good. Even beat up like this, it would work almost like a new one. Because what happens, it flows. There's a flow oh, of, sure. of the it's material. Like a, it's like a gel underneath there. So. Right. So it's a very low pressure. It'll just conform here with a very, very low pressure compared to most thermal interfaces. Okay. And then deploying a technology in a rack full of these blades, I mean, uh, would you be able to achieve like higher density than you could with an air-cooled um, set of systems? Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Essentially, it's how close you can pack all the metal. Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how close you can put the, the server blades. Really what limits the density is, is the dims. It's kind of mm. ironic, but everything else has to come up to the dims. You can see yes, how some of these are fairly thick, yes. and that's simply because of the dim heights. And, and, and the dim height and the, uh, uh, well, dims put out heat as well. Yes, yes, and they're planarized too. And you've mm -hmm. probably seen dims before and they have clips on it for airflow mm -hmm. to, to cool them. These are ba basically the same clips, except we fold the top so they will touch the the uh, the cold plate. Okay, and, and Phil was telling me about your deployment at Stanford. Can you tell me more about that system and its reliability and things uh, you know, out there in the field? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's been a great system. We deployed it last March, early last March. So it's been there almost a year now. And uh, it's working like a champ. What's really nice because it, it keeps it, everything really cool. There's no vibration of fans. Uh, the reliability of, of everything seems to have gone up. We've had zero electronic failures. All these motherboards, stems, everything. Not one single component has failed in this environment over the entire uh, and year. And it's been, been in what, what, six months? No, it's close to a year now. Closer to a year. Yeah. Wow. Terrific. And there's uh, 64 blades, yep. um, 128 motherboards, 256 Xeon chips. Okay. okay. And so Stanford's using this for one of their um, showcase products, their LCLS, uh, their linear coherent light source. And it's it's just crunching their data day in and day out. Uh, they're very, very happy with it. Terrific. So, so how does somebody engage with clustered systems? You work through partners or how, how do you... Yes, we're, we're a fairly small company, and uh, essentially what we do here is the classic knitting. If you look at any company, about 5% is the jewels of the company. The other 95%, you wonder why you're carrying it all around. You know, everything from clerks on the, on the docks to uh, PR people to um, manufacturing. And you look around here in this valley, it's all here. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. what do you need? You need some email and a, and a phone, and you have a virtual company. And so we do inbound marketing. We really work with the customers to decide what they really need, mm -hmm. develop products that meet that need, and then work with partners to do the design, the manufacture, and finally uh, even uh, partners, channel partners to uh, develop the, uh, the market and sell the products.